What's going on, everyone? Uh, we're going to talk about the facts surrounding free float, and we're going to get into that. And you're going to know at the end of this video how free float works and why it cannot be calculated at any point in time during the year other than the shareholder meeting voting period for proxy window. Let's take a look. So if, before I begin, I really don't understand, um, number one, why retail is so quick to listen to ideas such as say tech or DRS your shares or log the float. I get it, the motive to create MOAS or whatever to, to see how much shares the community has. There's no point to do that. If anything, all you're doing is you're giving the hedge funds, again, another reason to have data to use against you. Now, I also don't understand why YouTubers, such some that I respect very much, have inserted themselves into this because I guess it's, you know, there's not a lot to talk about right now, It you know, but we don't need to be hyping the community over something we don't understand. And we have people like user of intellect, someone in the name itself, um, clearly trying to emerge as something of a, uh, you know, influencer in the Twitter community, came out of nowhere, late June, don't even know who he is, don't really care. But the idea was pushed by him. And I noticed this two months ago, I was, I've been waiting for this log to float to come out. And here it is. So again, people like this, you can't trust them. They have al alternative motives half the time, especially when they pop out of nowhere with a, with something to push. So YouTubers need to stop getting sold by people like this, and they need to start learning how shit works so they can defend reality when this shit happens. Because it's getting real old being the only one that does it. <laughs> so number three, I don't understand why people, instead of learning, again, choose to follow the lead of people who don't understand the market dynamics or methodologies. Clearly, user of intellect does not understand how the market works and has no reason collecting everyone's data um, to see everyone's position sizes. So there is no point to do that. Also, nothing against Astro or Boss Blunts. They just got sold. Um, I get it. We get bored. We want to do everything we can to make our goals happen. Um, just keep in mind, nothing will ever work the way it is being pushed to work if it's coming out of a retailer's mouth, especially one that doesn't understand how the market works. So let me teach you how it works. This is the uh, document we'll be referencing today for this presentation. It's free float adjustments in global equity portfolios. And it's a good read for basic information um, regarding free float, index free float, all that good stuff. <clears throat> so free float represents the portion of a company's shares that is publicly traded as opposed to locked in shares held by strategic investors. I'm pretty sure we all knew this much. Now, what is a strategic investor? You know, that's your insiders, institutions, anything that's considered a long hold, anything that's with voting rights, because again, a voting rights is what matters, right? But anyways, market capitalization weights can be justified on a theoretical basis and better represent the relative economic importance of the companies in the portfolio. So this is the uh, older way that it was calculated uh, as far as calculating shares freely trading. Then everything kind of moves to free float weighting. Uh, that takes into account the trading opportunities, but change the geographic and industry composition of the global portfolio. However, a substantial portion of the global market capitalization is not freely traded. Shares held by governments, strategic long-term investors, insiders, company founders, and otherwise restricted shareholders can be considered unavailable for trading. In recent years, free float weighting has largely replaced total market capitalization weighting as the dominant equity index weighting scheme. Free float adjusted weights are introduced to provide a better representation of the investable and liquid opportunities in the market. So um, free float is a measure of liquidity. It is found in studies that the higher the free float is, the higher the liquidity should be, unless you have a lot of institutional ownerships. Because if you have a lot of institutions in a stock, guess what? That hurts the liquidity. So that could very well be part of the strategy of the hedge funds is to load up on AMC and GME to restrict the liquidity, which is what you see happening in the charts every day. It gives the illusion of shares not trading when there's no liquidity. So now let's look at a measure of liquidity. That's what free float is, right? It's a measure of liquidity. So how is it calculated? Although the calculation of free float adjusted capitalization may seem straightforward, a number of practicalities complicate the process. 
reliable shareholder data are not always available. We know this very well. There is no consensus on free float definitions across index providers, and precise free float calculations for individual companies are rarely disclosed in detail. Investors cannot replicate and verify free float calculations. It says this in this document specifically. Now, the calculation of free float inevitably depends on shareholder data availability and quality. In many countries, holding data are limited or may become available only after a significant lag, which is what we see with the 13 Fs. We, we get 13 F reports that come out once a quarter, but what happened between those three months span of time, no one knows, making it impossible to accurately determine the free float. While ownership data in countries like the US and UK are typically reported every quarter, institutional holdings are impossible to verify thus making calculation impossible outside of the annual shareholder meeting voting window for proxies. In cases where ownership data are unavailable, index providers only rely on alternative proxies for free floats such as trading volume or investor perception of freely traded shares. Now the keyword here is investor perception. That is what sales is all about, perception, right? The number you see on Weeble is technically it's a liquid number other than the day of the year we get the, P, the uh, NXP forms back or NPX forms where you can see the votes for the shareholder meeting. That is the only way you verify a float and or shares outstanding and or number held by public, less strategic investors and or institutions or insiders. Now, this adds yet another degree of subjectivity to the free float calculation process. Moreover, shareholder data for many companies is of questionable quality due to large short positions, asynchronous reporting, double counting of holdings, and other data errors. So again, if we're using things like Fintel to get free float data, it will never ever work because it's not accurate. The day after those 13Fs come out, it's no longer accurate. That's why I only report on them the day they come out. That's why log the float won't do anything other than expose data yet again that Wall Street could use against us. If anything, the one thing they don't know how to tell is how much shares are actually held by retail, but we're giving them that on a silver platter. And again, people like user of intellect that come out of nowhere pushing a product, don't trust them. There's no reason to. What have they done for you? Come up with this stupid idea that won't work? I mean, come on, man, and Astro and Blast Plus, you got to stop getting sold by people like this. They don't know what they're talking about. They don't know what they're talking about, and it makes makes y'all look a little silly, honestly. So let's just pick up the pieces here and uh, just, just stop. I mean, there's no point. Or or keep it keep going. I don't give a shit. I'm just trying to teach you how this shit works. Now you know. If you choose to continue doing it, at least now you know it's pointless. Have a good one.